call Gareth Hughes. Uh, kia ora, Mr Speaker. Kia ora. Nā mihinui kia koutou. Kia ora. Uh, first, I'd like to start by welcoming MPs back on the first day of Parliament and hope they and all New Zealanders had a fantastic summer break with their friends in Farnau. Mr Speaker, I rise to support the Patents, Trans, Tasman, Patent, Attorneys and Other Matters Amendment Bill. Now, Mr Speaker, I've found that talking about patent law is a surefire way to lose people to talk to at parties and a surefire way to fall asleep at night. But it's something critically important to the future of New Zealand and our prosperity. Now, the Green Party knows that intellectual property and patent law is important as part of building a smarter, richer Aotearoa New Zealand. In this contribution, I'd like to touch on some of the broader issues, but first uh, touch on this bill. The bill does three things, which we've heard tonight. Amend the grounds in which a person can oppose the granting of a patent under the recently amended Patents Act 2013, a single patent application process and a single patent examination process with Australia, and a joint registration regime for patent attorneys. Mr Speaker, back in that legislation, which I know Claire Curran talked about in 2013, now, this was amending very old, more than 50-year-old legislation. The highlight for me uh, was the, the, the campaign successfully convincing the government to... Uh, I've forgotten how many backflips there was eventually, but finally we got there, which was a ban on software patents. It was a, an incredibly good step. Now, this wasn't a long time ago, and here we are having to fix up this mess in that original legislation. Now, the amendment on the grounds which a person can oppose a patent application is the correction of the drafting error around the unity of invention uh, clause, which we've heard around. Uh, it, it seems pretty common sense to be passing this if it is, in fact, a drafting error. One of the questions I'll be looking out for in select committee is hearing from patent attorneys Good on, how many cases actually uh, were affected by the so-called drafting error. Because I've, I've read reports that there's an argument that this change should be applied retrospectively. When the Patents Law 2013 was passed, it did include an element of retrospectivity uh, in terms of New Zealand priority claims. So it's an interesting case. We applied it in this case, but not this one. So I'm looking forward to having that discussion in a select committee. Now, that cleans up the mess, but the big part of the bill uh, deals with the parts bigger in scope, which is the single patent examination and application process. Now, we've heard tonight that 95% of those 6,000 patent applications filed in New Zealand are also filed in Australia. So there's a strong argument around common sense and uh, efficiency in avoiding duplication to have a similar regime. Now, on the other side of the ledger, I understand there would be concerns around New Zealand losing their sovereignty. The tribunal, for example, only has at least a single New Zealand member. So I understand some of those concerns, but I'd like to uh, respond to them and point out that, in fact, it's hard to argue there's a loss of sovereignty because there will be one examiner from each country, a uh, New Zealander in the case, and a New Zealand hearing a uh, New Zealander who's domiciled here. Now, both the officers will be applying their own unique jurisdictional uh, legislation when it comes to those cases. Now, we heard in the, the, the small amount of consultation around this bill that Australian patent attorneys support uh, this registration process, but patent attorneys in New Zealand have raised some concerns around the likely increased regulatory and business compliance costs uh, to register and practice in New Zealand. Now, it's going to be interesting to hear from them and their perspective in New Zealand. Because when you look around just at the single examination process, the SEP, the government's own departmental disclosure statement does say uh, there was no consultation, the cost and benefit of implementing it haven't been quantified, and in fact, uh, it's unclear whether the fees, in fact, would need to increase or decrease. So still uh, substantial questions for a uh, bill which has been in the pipes for a long time. Now, Mr Speaker, in the remaining time, I'd like to actually touch on the wider and, in fact, more important issues, because it's great to be seeing the Government uh, of New Zealand discussing patents and intellectual property in our Parliament, but what we're doing tonight is simply scratching the surface, uh, dealing around the edges, the fringes, and, in fact, ignoring the big, most important questions facing us, which is how do we increase the innovation potential of New Zealand? Now, the government uh, is happy to, to, to deal with IP issues. In fact, that's exactly what we see in the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Here, the government's explicit. You could say it's patently clear. 
that there's going to be a cost to New Zealanders on the order of $55 million from the copyright uh, extensions of term limits. So the government's happy to talk about uh, IP when it comes to the TPPA, happy to talk about a joint regime with Australia, despite all the questions, perhaps additional costs for New Zealand patent attorneys, all nearly 200 of them, but they're not talking about how do we actually increase the number of patents we see filed in New Zealand. Because under this legislation, it may be easier and it uh, may be more expensive to file a patent in New Zealand and Australia, but we're not having those conversations. How do we get uh, more Kiwis coming up with those good ideas, uh, commercialising them, marketing them and exporting them? Because New Zealand does have an innovation problem, and new, numerous reports clearly show that. Now, members no doubt are aware of the New Zealand paradox, which is we face lower growth internationally compared to our competitors, ostensibly despite having the right economic uh, mechanisms in place. So on a full capita, per capita basis, I think the answer is pretty clear, and I agree with Sean Hendy on this point. The answer to the New Zealand paradox is, in fact, we have an innovation problem. Because we're in the bottom half of the OECD when it comes to research and development, we file four times fewer patents than the OECD average. And if you agree with the recent uh, Productivity Commission report, they note there has been an increase in R&D spending uh, currently. However, the actual innovation benefits are debatable. But when it comes to the patents area, in fact, we're stagnant. So as a country, we need to ask ourselves, why are we spending more money on R&D, but only getting the same number of patents? And why is that so? Because the result is that New Zealanders have got to work harder for every dollar we earn as a nation, and we continue to slide down those economic rankings. If you have a less innovation-focused economy, we remain re reliant on those raw commodities, the, the milk powder and the brown paper bags, the raw logs lining up on the port, and we see our talented uh, young Kiwis head off overseas. And all members should know this, though I think the government uh, sometimes has their head in the sand over it. There is a limit to the amount of milk powder we can export. There is a limit, and we're seeing it in our waterways at the moment that we can't swim in it over summer. We're seeing that limit. But there's no limit to the amount of IP, services, products, software that we could be exporting across the world. Human ingenuity is limited. So I, I agree with the member when he raises that point. But why isn't the government seeing the number of patents rise? Why is the government continuing to see New Zealand in the bottom half of the OECD? Why is the government continuing to prop up coal mines, hoping for oil in the deep seas, subsidising irrigation? Because you say that, uh, but you don't follow it with your actions. Now, I know the member wants to be a minister one day. Maybe when he's a minister one day, he can actually implement the stuff. But at the moment, what we do see from the government is a focus on more milk, more cows, more coal. It's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe that sees us slide down those rankings. And it's a recipe that sees New Zealanders working some of the longest hours for some of the lowest wages and paying some of the highest cost of living in the OECD. Now, Mr Speaker, my vision for New Zealand is one that invests in innovation. At the last election, we took a policy of investing an extra $1 billion over three years uh, in terms of research and development. It was a policy to increase the number of places, uh, tertiary uh, institutions. Now, as a country, we could be providing more advice for Kiwis to be developing those good ideas, patenting them, marketing, commercialising and exporting. And what the Green Party wants to see is New Zealand not just languish at the bottom half of the OECD, we want to see us get into the top half. We want to see more patents filed, more in line with the OECD average. We want to see more collaborations between our great Kiwi thinkers. We want to see an economy which is built on ideas, not just built on grass, water and coal, and turning that into the milk powder. Mr Speaker, in, in, in summary, if you look at the New Zealand economic story over the last decade, despite some of those great exemplars, I'm thinking the rocket labs, the zeros, what we have seen is an economy become more simplified, more dependent on a few raw commodities, and it's that old story of being dependent on milk powder. So tonight, as we discuss patents and intellectual property, let's not ignore that elephant in the room, which is the innovation gap that steers our country in the face. And Mr Speaker, next year, it's election year, and I look forward to standing on the hustings and arguing for a more innovation economy, one that invests in its people, that actually sees us uh, innovating, thriving, and that's the recipe for a cleaner, smarter, fairer Aotearoa New Zealand.